Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at the new multiple camera setup option for Cartoon Animator 5.3 and cover how you can use a variety of camera techniques to achieve the best results with storyboarding in your project. Let's start in the new camera editor feature. In this window you can toggle between the preview, switch and record camera by default. The preview camera is used for just that, previewing without recording any movements. When you activate the record camera, you'll see the recording icon in the top right of your viewport. You can open this track in the timeline, and as soon as we make any movement further down the timeline, a frame will appear in the transform track, meaning this movement is now recorded. The switch option handles switching between multiple cameras, which we'll cover momentarily. If we want to add another camera, we can use the preview cam to navigate to a viewpoint that we like, and then click the add button to add a second record camera. You can open this up in the timeline as well, and rename it. You can recapture the thumbnail in the camera editor by clicking capture viewport thumbnail which is useful for creating a rough storyboard of reference shots. We can add other camera shots as well. Be sure when navigating your viewport to a different area that you activate the preview camera first to avoid recording any transform keyframes. You can use the position of one camera as a reference when placing another new shot, just be sure to add the new one before moving the existing one. You can add as many cameras as you like until you have a decent looking storyboard of different shots. Under settings, you can enter a hotkey for quicker switching between each shot. Let's enter in a couple here and then go to the timeline and open up the switcher track under project, which is where you can key in the switching of the active camera. You'll see that at frame one, we have a keyframe which is set to the first record camera shot by default. In our case, scene 1. I can scrub further down the timeline to find a suitable frame where I want to switch to my next shot and choose the goose shot. To confirm I want the active camera to switch to that shot at frame 100, I'm going to click Set Camera Switch Key. We can then hit 0 to enable the switch camera, which will allow us to preview our shots in sequence. Repeat the process as you proceed down the timeline. Just remember to switch to the camera shot that you want active at that point, and add the switch key. We'll do this a few more times to get our initial shot sequence established. You can also go back and change any of the shots used at their respective keyframes by right-clicking the keyframe and choosing another shot from the list. When we're done, we can toggle back to the switch cam and playback to see the result. So right now, they're all still shots aside from the first one, so let's explore some basic camera properties and movement techniques. I'll start with a 2D pan to follow the shot with our birds. At the bird shot switch keyframe, I'll open up the camera track for that specific shot and move the camera with the bird shot active, which will give us a keyframe in the transform track to start our movement. At the last frame of that active shot, I'll then pan the camera to the right, which will emphasize the parallax effect between the birds and the background clouds, which basically exaggerates the simulated effect of 3D depth in a 2D environment by causing foreground objects to move by faster. You'll see this in 2D platform games like the original Mario Brothers. Next, let's use a camera follow on this goose shot. You'll see a follow object function in the settings that allows us to link our camera's movement to a scene object. Simply click the link button, then the object you want it to follow. There is a special link subtrack under the camera where you can set keyframes to link and unlink the follow constraint. There's also the option to set a basic lens focal length for your camera, which can be keyframed in the lens subtrack. Let's add another camera here to experiment.
Notice that if I increase this value, that we get less in our view and everything seems to be compressed together along the 3D plane or z-axis. If we switch back to our scene one shot with the original focal length, you'll notice that everything seems a lot more stretched out. This can be used to emphasize increased distance between objects in your shot on the z-axis. Lastly, let's look at a more specialized shot called the dolly zoom, which you'll often see in movies to emphasize suspense or psychological pressure, also known as a vertigo shot. This is achieved by pushing or pulling the camera towards the subject while simultaneously adjusting the focal length. Let's start with our shot of the windmills here at 200 millimeters, and at the end of the shot, key in a value of around 100. Then from the first to the last frame of the shot, I'll zoom in significantly. You can see the result is almost like the background clouds get sucked behind the subject of our shot, which is the windmills which become more prominent, drawing your focus. Finally, you can also right-click any keyframe and use the transition curve setting to adjust the rate of change between that one and the one before it. For example, Accelerate will start off slow and exponentially increase the speed before reaching the second keyframe. When you're done, give it a playback and see the results. That's it for this tutorial guys, be sure to check out our other camera tutorials for more fun techniques like these, and I'll see you in the next one.